It's nice to lay down some lines and be committed to them and then have to problem solve around that to kind of negotiate the page. To sort of get the gesture and the idea out without overworking it. I don't want to just do a drawing or just do a painting. I want to always be switching the process. When I'm making a new drawing, it's, it's usually completely done in ink. I don't do a lot of pencil sketch beforehand. It's this really kind of puzzle-like idea of how to fit things together and how to create a sense of perspective and melding things together so that it can create that false sense of depth. You can create so much with just very, very simple straight lines. A lot of my imagery is about people and sort of social observation. And I'm not usually drawing from life. I usually try to draw from memory as though it's a storybook. That filter creates the style that I'm working in. So usually I'm just sort of like working on a variety of different things, somewhat unrelated to where I am. I've done a lot of work in uncomfortable situations, you know, in trains or buses, and I think that it lends itself to the storytelling of my work. My process involves walking around the city and documenting what I see with a camera phone or a larger SLR camera, and then I redraw that onto a primed wood panel. I use a clear primer so that the wood crane shows through. I get the ink drawing established first, and then I start painting really loosely and really spontaneously. It's like a contrast to the tight line drawing that I've done. I like that variety, and I just like to explore different spaces in which to create things. When I'm working on smaller details, I can focus in on that and make it very deliberate, but then I like the process of just fleshing it out as it goes. And maybe that's why I enjoy more urban landscapes versus other subject matters that already exist. I, I really like inventing things. That seems to me the real joy of our work. Everything I capture in the city is really visually dense. I'm really attracted to things that have a bunch of texture and grit and decay. If there's a lot of layers and there's lots of visual denseness, when I look at that, I find that really, really interesting. And I want to recreate that through my art process. I'm inspired by people who have stories and experience. And I'm inspired by people who just sort of have love. I really don't mind people coming over and asking questions or talking to me. I, I think it helps break up the day and I'm a pretty social person. Because we're really observing and then recapturing things and just kind of getting in there and just really seeing those cool things that exist in these like familiar places. I think I've heard it described as the, the spotlight effect where you feel that people are watching you. You just are going to behave in a slightly different way. There are very few times when I don't have my entire portable studio with me. A pen doesn't have to be just a solid black. It can be really thin and really thick depending on how you angle it and how you hold it. I always draw with Stadler marker pens. I use the Luma colors. Either I have like a small sketchbook or a full like portfolio size drawing bag with me, but I'm never without. Because the pacing is so, so, so slow, you don't really have to pause at all to, to reflect on it. You just kind of make it in the moment. I prefer to make something that's imperfect, but has like a lot of energy to it. When you think about it, we all see the same things, but then how you can use your particular styles and approaches to things and represent them differently is really interesting. 